Hi, everyone. I am Allie Cookson. I am the data quality trainer for the Maine Department of Education data team, and I am so happy to be here with you today. Hope everyone is faring well, preparing for the storm um, that is supposed to be coming through. Um, today's webinar is going to be about quarterly reporting. This report was actually due yesterday, um, and but this is something that can be reported all throughout the year. So that's something that we really wanna to emphasize today. Um, there are a lot of kinks that come up with quarterly reporting, especially daily attendance. And so this is something that you'll wanna be aware of, um, especially as we get toward the end of the year. If you can work out those kinks now uh, with how to report, with any issues with the report, if we can work them out now, um, then we're going to be much better off uh, toward the end of the year when that certification period comes uh, along. So just something to be aware of um, as we're going through this. For those of you just joining us, um, I will um, repeat that we are um, recording today's webinar. And if you have your camera on, it will be in the recording. Um, in your microphone, please keep it muted as we um, uh, go through today's webinar. If you have questions, please feel free to use the raise hand option or post them in the chat. The chat is up in the top right corner um, and you can use that or you can use the raise hand option and I'll be sure to call on you. So let's go ahead and get started. Resources for uh, uh, quarterly reporting can be found on the Help Desk website. We have a couple different locations for them. How to report. Um, and I will also reiterate, there is nothing new in today's webinar from previous reporting. Um, this is a, re a review of quarterly reporting. So just so and there's no surprises, there's nothing new this um, quarter compared to last quarter. So re resources, back to resources. Um, how to report the data in NEO can be found in the data reporting instructions uh, tab on the Help Desk website. Student Enrollment Guides is going to tell you the when and what to report. It will be more of the, um, sorry, just one second. Um, it will be more of the data dictionaries, things like that. So um, situations in which you would report a behavior, situations in which you would report a truancy, how to manage truancies, um, how daily attendance works, what qualifies a student as um, present or um, excused, unexcused, things like that. Um, so there are guides in there for those types of situations. Those would be in the student enrollment guides page. Um, whereas the, da the data reporting instructions are going to go through step by step how to find the reports, what to do to validate, certify, things like that. Locating your report instructions. This is the data reporting instructions page, what it will look like. They're in alphabetical order for the most part. If you go down, there's a big block that is daily attendance. And there are, because there are three different reports that go with daily attendance. One of them is um, the details report. Another is student lookup, where you can find a specific student and see what their daily attendance looks like for every day that they've been enrolled. And then there's also the summary report. So you have a couple different places that you can go to look for um, daily attendance information. On this page also, you will find the behavior instructions and how to find the behavior report. We do not have truancy instructions on here, but the truancy instructions are very similar to all the other ones. Um, so feel free to um, use the other ones to help you guide, get to where you need to go. On the student enrollment guides page, this is what you're going to see here. Um, you have attendance reporting guidance that will go through the fact that like 50% of the school day, qualifies a student as present or absent. So if they're attending school for 50% or more of the day, they would be considered present. Whereas if they were absent for a part of, for 50% or more of the day, then they would be considered absent, excused or unexcused. Um, however, the school district determines how to manage that. Um, and so that would be your resources for that. It also goes through some guides for what would qualify as an excused or unexcused absence um, for any principal superintendents who have questions about that. There's also behavior guidance. Um, the behavior guidance page is really has some really great resources on how to report behaviors. I do have a visual of some of those guides in here. Um, some districts I've heard have printed that off and use it frequently in their district for determining when to report behavior incidences, what qualifies as a bullying incident, things like that. So uh, we'll go through that as we go through today's webinar. 
Um, and so your guides for truancy are going to be found here. Um, your definitions and reporting guidelines are going to be down at the bottom of this page. Um, and what qualifies a student as truant, um, grade levels, things like that. So that will all be here. So you have those are your two resources for reporting. So there are four quarterly reports. One of them is bullying. Bullying is only reported in NEO. So that is unless the student is suspended. In that case, the student would be reported in NEO in the bullying reporting system and also in the behavior report. So anytime a student is suspended, it's a behavior report, a discipline report, um, and that gets reported in Synergy. Um, all the other reports, behavior, daily attendance, truancy, those are entered into Synergy and then uploaded into the NEO report, and then that's where they get certified. So we'll go through that a little in a little bit more detail as we go through the webinar. All LEAs with publicly funded students are required to report all of these um, four reports. There are four quarters. Um, all four, so we've already gone through quarter one uh, that covers data from July to September, and it's due on the 15th of October. This quarter that closed yesterday was October through December, and then we have another quarterly validation, which is due on, uh, which it covers January through March and is due on the 15th of um, April. And then our last quarter is April through June, and that is going to have varying due dates. Um, these reports, even though we have validation periods, they are open all year long. And so these are things that you'll want to make sure that you're kind of keeping up on, especially daily attendance. I recommend doing as often as you can um, because the, it's a very large file. It's your number of students times the number of days that you've been in school. It can be a lot of files, especially if you wait until the end of the school year. Um, so just something to kind of be aware of. So the data was due yesterday. There is still time. Um, if you did not meet yesterday's validation, there isn't still some time to get that validation done by your superintendent. Um, Anne, I see, oh. and Marie, I see you have a question. So I think you just answered my question. So the validation okay. piece of it, I was under the impression that the superintendent does not need to validate each quarter. He only needs to certify at the end of the year. So do we have to have somebody validate each quarter? Because I validate going through and making sure that the information is accurate by the end of each quarter and then update it as we go through the year and then let him know that everything's accurate to the best of my ability and he certifies it. So because he just acts ironic because he emailed me this morning and asked the question, why does the MDOE always say that we have a quarter report that's due and I don't have to sign anything? So mm -hmm. I was on the impression that anybody can validate me, but I don't have access to validate. Ooh. Yes, so if you don't have access to like hit that validation button, that submit uh, to DOE or um, so the, it varies by report. Um, if you don't have access to push that button, then it's not actually validating and coming up to the state. Um, so we don't see that it's been validated. So are you just checking it and making sure that it looks correct? Am I under am I understanding that? That, that is correct. So because yeah. I tell him, I said, don't have to worry about it until the end of the year. But he keeps getting these reminders and he yeah. came in this morning and asked me the question. Hold on a second. Asked the question, why do we keep getting this notice? But because yeah. I would like to go in and validate it. Yes, I mean, that is something what we have heard um, that data specialists would like the opportunity to validate. Um, we haven't gotten to that capability yet. Um, hopefully we can in the future have that as part of um, the system so that you can go through and you can um, validate before your superintendent certifies. I know that's something big that people are really interested in, uh, but we're not quite there yet, unfortunately. Um, but it is um, validation is something that has a button that needs to be clicked. Um, superintendents have access to do that. And so your okay. superintendent can go in and do that. That's a great question, Anne Marie. Thank you for asking. So you're saying that he needs to go in each quarter to validate? Yes. Yep. Okay. That's true. Great question. It's a really good clarifying question. Thank you. Yes. All right. Let's jump into the um, bullying report. So this is that visual that I was chatting about earlier. Um, so these are incidents. Um, so what you would do, this is just a flow chart starting up in the top corner here. 
Um, did the incident result in a form of suspension, expulsion, or removal of the student to an alternative setting for at least half of the school day? If the answer is no, um, then you would come over across the top. If it was bullying or cyberbullying, then the incident, um, if, it, if the answer is no, you don't need to report anything. Um, if the answer was yes, then it would be uh, reported only in NEO. So this is if the student was not suspended, not put into an alternative setting, uh, but they were bullying someone. Um, you, maybe you handled it in a different way um, instead of taking the student out of school, then it would just be reported in bullying. However, if the student was um, removed from their setting, their school setting, and put into an alternative setting, then it would come down here. And so if the incident was a bullying incident or a cyberbullying incident on another student, then you would have to report it in Synergy and NEO if the student was suspended. So if the student was suspended and they were um, bullying or cyberbullying, then it's reported in both Synergy and NEO. If the student was not suspended or expelled or anything um, in school, out of school, whichever one it is, uh, then it, but they were bullying, then it would only be reported in the bullying system. This visual is available in the student, um, student enrollment guides page. Highly recommend you find it and download it and post it somewhere in your school so you can see um, so that people know how to report these things. Can be very helpful. I've heard from other schools that they use it and love it. So locating this report in NEO, it has its own module. So this is the bullying reporting system. For all of these reports, you'll see this come up multiple times. Um, for all of these reports, you do need to have access to the bullying reporting system in NEO um, in order to be able to go in and certify or um, validate any reports. Um, as Anne-Marie was saying earlier, um, different credentials are available for different people. Um, so depending on your position, you're going to have different credentials available to you. Um, so superintendents have the ability to uh, validate these reports and review submission, things like that. Um, whereas you may be able to just go in and see the data and not have that button push to be able to push it. Um, so superintendents will be the ones that have those. They are required to report up to the state and whereas you're the ones that are going in and just entering the data for them so that they can go in and push that button. So there may be need, need to be a lot of communication between superintendent and data specialist. Um, but if you don't have access, cannot find it, please submit a NEO access request form. Uh, so you will need to have an active NEO account, uh, active staff account, a uh, staff assignment in NEO in order to be able to be entered into it. So if you're new and you haven't been um, a data specialist before or you're new to your position, um, then you'll need to go through and you'll have to have um, someone in your district enter you into NEO staff so that we can get that access request processed. Once you're in the NEO bullying reporting system, so in NEO bullying reporting system, you'll just select this module. And then it brings you to this page where it goes through the statute. Um, so this will give you information about what qualifies as a bullying incident, what needs to be done, all the statutory requirements behind it. Uh, the definition of bullying will be there as well. Who to contact, Kelly Bailey is your contact for this. And then at the very bottom, you'll have an opportunity to click the report and review certify um, of, sub of substantiated incidents of bullying, excuse me. And so you would click here. It will come up with your school district. If you have multiple school districts, you can select um, the dropdown and it will change your school. And then you will see all of the schools in your district, however many counts for each school and then the district total. Um, by now, if your superintendent went in and reviewed this um, in uh, October, you would see their name under reviewed by under 10-1. Um, and then once they review again for 1-1, you would see their name pop up there as well. So um, that's how the bullying reporting system works. Then we'll get into the behavior report. If there are any questions about bullying, please feel free to post them in the chat wherever you need to do. So this is one of our student data uh, reports. So any 
any report that has that is in the student data module comes from Synergy. So discipline incidents are entered directly into state Synergy. And then every hour there's an automatic ETL from Synergy into NEO that will pull this data into the reports. So any changes that you see in a NEO report that need to be made for a student, they actually have to go back to Synergy in order to be updated. So the flow looks like entering data into your local student information system, could be PowerSchool, Infinite Campus, web to school um, Tyler Tech, whichever one you're using, you should have a place to pull your report and then upload into State Synergy. Um, and so if you have any questions about how that works, if you've never done this part of it, please feel free to reach out for a training. We do have state reporting system training right on our website um, on the Medems Help Desk page. If you go down to like the kind of in the middle, there's a button that you can click and submit a form. You can also email me directly. Um, I'll post, I'll let you know my email address and everything. I don't think I have it at the end of this webinar, but I'll post it in the chat so everybody can have it. So if you have any questions about that, please feel free to schedule an on, a one on one training session. Um, but once the data is in state synergy, that hourly ETL, there's a clock on the help desk website as well that once it gets to zero, that data will upload into uh, the NEO state reports. If it doesn't, then that's when you would want to reach out to the help desk and see if you have any um, if we're having any issues um, that may or not, may not be posted there. So um, yeah, that's where you can find all that. Once again, this flow chart, um, if a student is um, bullying then or cyberbullying, then that gets reported in both behavior and, syner and in synergy. Sorry, bullying and synergy. Um, and so that's when you would have these. But the other incidents that are reported here would be any um, drug use, um, suspensions, anything that moves a student to an alternative setting, expulsions, suspensions, in school, out of school. If they're not in their regular classroom, that's what gets reported in behavior. Um, so any of these types of incidents, you would have to report to the state if there is a suspension involved. Locating this report, in NEO, it will be under student data. And once you're in student data, you'll select student reports. And then you'll select the behavior certification report. Once again, if you don't have access to student data, we'll have to have a student, uh, NEO access request form submitted. And you have to have an active staff assignment in order to get in there. In NEO, select student data, student reports. These are in alphabetical order, so behavior certification is pretty close to the top. We'll select either behavior certification report or behavior details report. Behavior certification report is going to be your aggregate numbers, whereas the details report is going to go through each of the students and what their um, what the incident was, what the date was of the incident, what type of incident it was. All of that information will be in the details report, and you'll be able to see who's making up those aggregate counts on the behavior certification report. Behavior certification report will look like this. You have the opportunity to select the view details report, and you also have, if you're the superintendent, the opportunity to review and submit to DOE. If you don't have this button, it probably is your superintendent who has it, so you'll have to communicate up to them. Um, if you wanted to know, for example, who that one student was that had uh, been listed as a violent incident with physical injury, then that's when you would want to select into the link to details report. And once you do that, you'll see a report that looks like this. So you can see there are there were two students. One of them, um, Buttercup Philippa, was uh, committed this violent incident on 4-2-23. This must be an old one because um, it would have to be within this school year. But um, so you would be able to see that that student had that um, infraction of, upon them. And if you send this report back to your schools and say, you know, these are what we have for accounts, this is what we have for students who had um, in school suspensions, out of school suspensions, anything like that, they would be able to see this and say yes or no if it looks accurate. So it's not just a, you don't have to put all the weight on you. You can send this report back to your schools and ask them. You know, does this look accurate? When are we reporting the correct data to the state um, and make sure that everything looks good? So they would know these students the best. Send it back to them if you need to. 
But this is where you would see those specific incidents that make up those aggregate counts. With this, you can also do some searching. You can download and export this if you wanted to export it as an Excel and then send it out to your um, school administrative assistants, then you could do that. You can also sort this by grade level, and then we're gonna go into daily attendance. Um, so you can do a lot of sorting for each column. So grade level, incident date, incident type, any, if you wanna find a specific student, you can use the search button. So you have a lot of options here. All right, we'll move into daily attendance. I'm not seeing any other questions. So daily attendance works very similarly to the behavior uh, reporting in how it's reported. So daily attendance gets recorded in and entered into NEO, or sorry, into Synergy uh, from your local student information system. So any you should have a report in your local system that you can pull and then upload into the state Synergy system and then your attendance is there. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it all goes in. Once again, it's a pretty big file, so you'll want to make sure that you're kind of checking, spot checking, uh, seeing if everybody is going through. <clears throat> Once it's in State Synergy, then it gets uploaded into NEO student data. This report is located in student data as well, student data, student reports, and then you'll select the daily attendance certification report. Once again, you will need access to student data in order to get in here. Alphabetical order, if we scroll down a little bit further on this student reports page, we'll find daily attendance certification, daily attendance details, daily attendance student lookup, and daily attendance summary. So certification is where the superintendent will be clicking the button. That's your aggregate counts, everything that needs to be done there. Uh, and then details are your resource if you need to go in and see, you know, which students have however many days of attendance, who's chronically absent, who are my incomplete attendance students that have no days of attendance, but they've been enrolled for 10 days. Um, those are all gonna be there. Student lookup is gonna be specific students. So if you wanna dive deep into one specific student and their attendance for the, the whole school year, you can go in and you can look at them right there. You also can find them in Synergy. So if you, you it's whichever one you prefer, Synergy or Neo, uh, making sure that everything kind of lines up between the two, um, you can use the student lookup. Student attendance summary, similar to details report. So this is what your certification report will look like. You'll have all of your days, total days enrolled. Uh, total days enrolled is not necessarily the enrollment for a student um, in Synergy. So for example, the example that I usually like to use is um, if you have a student who's enrolled from December 1st to December 31st, that enrollment is not going to be 31 days entered here. It's only going to be the number of days that your student had attendance entered into school. So it might be 15 days if you only went to school for three weeks in December. So it's going to look different than the amount of time that they've been enrolled in Synergy. Total days enrolled is just the number of days attendance of attendance that have been entered. And you want that to be about the number of students that you have times the number of days you've had of school. It's not going to be exact because you're going to have students move in and students move out, but it's going to be pretty close. Um, and if it's not close, you'll want to look into that and take and dig a little bit deeper. Chronically absent, uh, so your students are going to be uh, chronic absenteeism is reported here. Um, you'll want to take a look at those if you want to investigate any of that. And then incomplete records will not prevent validation on quarters one, two, and three, but it will create some issues at the end of the school year. So if you have incomplete records, you may want to take care of them now. Uh, these could be students who are attending school at a regional program and there was no communication about who was entering attendance, maybe. Uh, they could be students who you enrolled at the beginning of the school year and then later found out that they were moving out of state and ex enter the date <clears throat> that they let you know that they were moving out um, instead of that one day enrollment. So if you want, if you need to back up the ent the exit date, that's what you would need to do. So we're looking at any records that are 10 days long. So enrolled in Synergy for 10 days, so December 1 to December 10th, for example, um, that would expect attendance. If the student never attended during that time, it's incomplete. So if you back it up 
December 1st is December 2nd, then it will be fine um, and it won't be considered incomplete or you need to enter attendance for that student. So it really depends on the situation. If you need help troubleshooting any of those incomplete records, um, feel free to give us a call. Uh, we'll be happy to help you. But here you can link into your summary report if you wanna see those specific students. You can see here that this student is incomplete. So this is that one incomplete that was on the record. There are no days of enrollment because the student has no days of attendance entered. Um, and so this would be a student that you'd have to determine, you know, when did their enrollment start? Did they come to school? What, what was their situation? Um, and maybe it is that you have to enter attendance. It could be that your system's not pulling them for some reason, um, but that would be something to work out now. These are the kinks that we really want to kind of get under, um, get control of now before we get to the end of the school year when all kinds of reports are due. So um, we're happy to help troubleshoot with these two if you have any questions about them. You can search through this for specific students and you can also export this report to Excel and you can sort these columns. So if you're looking specifically for your incomplete records, feel free to sort by um, incomplete records. Incomplete is gonna be a Y, so incomplete, yes. Um, so those columns can all be sorted as well. You can also sort, I also recommend sorting by um, total days enrolled to see how many, like see if any students are missing days. If they have like three days and they were there for longer, um, even if a student has one day of attendance entered, it's going to be considered a complete record, even though it may not be complete from your records. Um, so we're just looking to make sure that all students have something for attendance entered. If a student um, has like three days of attendance entered, you'd want to make sure that that's accurate. Um, so you can sort these columns to see if everything looks good. So just another view of the attendance report. Um, and you can see the total days enrolled, total days present, total days absent, uh, unexcused abs or uh, sorry, excused absences, things like that. Um, so if you wanted to review a specific student with your district, you could go ahead and do that. It will also tell you if a student has a truancy record. Um, so <clears throat> if a student has 10 or more days of unexcused absences, um, then they would be on the truancy report. So let's jump into that truancy report. Once again, very similar to the other ones, data is entered into your local student information system when a truancy is, be, is started. Then you have a report that you can pull from your local system, upload it into State Synergy, and then it will go into the student reports, student data. This is another one of those student data reports um, in the student data module, uh, student data, student reports, truancy certification report. For this one, you'll have to scroll down and it's toward the bottom, truancy certification and truancy details. Once again, that certification report is gonna be your aggregate counts. Truancy details is going to be your specific students that make up those counts. Here we can see the certification report. We can see that there were two incidents of truancies entered, uh, unexcused absences, average unexcused absence. And then we can have this column actually um, changed. So incomplete truancy incidents actually changed to potentially truant. Um, and potentially truant means that a student in daily attendance appears to have some have enough unexcused absences to make them truant. But there was no truancy incident entered for that student in state synergy. So that would be someone that you would want to review to see if they were um, truly truant or not. Um, so just that's something that's a tool that we've used to validate um, a truancy as well. So if you have that student in there, you should be able to see them in your details report. So you can see um, these are the two, you can see here the truancy type description is please verify attendance data and add a truancy record if necessary. So for this, stu this student, Topaz Cornelius, you would want to go back and you would want to look in Synergy, uh, look at their attendance. Were they truant? Should there be a truancy in there? Um, and if there is, if there was an incident, you would want to make sure that you're reporting it. If there wasn't, then you should be all set. 
the top line here, that was a student that was entered um, into, into Synergy, probably your local system, and then entered into Synergy um, as Truant and has all the steps gone through and everything like that. This report is searchable. You can save and export. You can also do some column sorting, so you can find those, please verify if you need to. If you ever have any questions about um, quarterly reporting, uh, any other reports that are coming up, please feel free to reach out to the Medems Help Desk at medems.helpdesk at main.gov. Um, our website is also very helpful. Highly recommend that you bookmark that site. Um, or you can give us a call at 207-624-6896. We will be happy to help you. I'm going to post my email address in the chat. If you would like to reach out for a training, please feel free to do so. Um, if you would like to use the um, state reporting system training registration, that is available on this website here as well. So you can go ahead and use that tool um, too. My email is also linked on the website um, if you click on my name on the right hand column. If there are no questions, then we are all set for today. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, however long or short it may be due to the storm. Um, and if you have questions, feel free to reach out.